yesterday's uh, preliminary round in the qualifiers, Leash against Cork, in a moment. But first to Casement Park, where Antrim took on Westmead, and our reporter is Paul O'Flynn. It was a classic game of two halves at Casement Park. Antrim seized an early advantage as Westmeath were sluggish from the start. Neil McManus began his 11-point haul with an easy free. <laughs> they were already three points up when Conor McCann hit the back of the net inside 10 minutes. <laughs> Westmeath soon pulled a goal back. Paul Greville reacted quickest to the breaking ball and snaked his way around the defence to finish from a tight angle. But that was as good as it got in the half. Antrim responded with a flurry of points and McCann drilled home a second goal on the half hour. Despite five points from Brendan Murta, Westmead trailed by 216 to 19 at the break. But the Leinster men came storming back in the second half. Murta was their main threat again, and Derek McNicholas hit a hat trick of points to bring the gap down to three. But McManus came to the fore again for Antrim as Westmead ran out of steam. Fullback Cormac Donnelly joined the scoring with a huge free from all of 90 metres. That was awarded by the referee after some consultation. Antrim finished with an impressive flourish. McManus fittingly knocked over the final score, his 11th of the match. Despite some nervous moments, the Saffrons go through to an All-Ireland qualifier clash with Carlo. Westmeath will rue their slow start as they bow out of this year's championship. 225 to 119, the final score. Well, well, I feel we've made great progress, like, because if you look at the team this year compared to last year, we're, we're down a lot of players. So uh, there's a lot of new players that have to come in and fit into the squad. So like, um, that's, that's a help, like, you know. So from, I think we'll be getting stronger. There was uh, three 19-year-olds playing, like, so they have to get better. I suppose that just 225 is good scoring any day of the week, like you know, and we took our scores well. Disappointing part of the game was the way we lost our shape to start the second half, and the way we give away ball too easily, and you know we allowed Westmead to come at us, like you know. So uh, there are the things that we can work on. Yeah, but well, we learned from the few games we played against, uh, particularly the Galway game, we were down nine points. You know, at various stages and come back to be level with 10 or 12 minutes to go. That it wasn't a lost cause. It was just such a pity that they didn't put in half the performance first half to the second half and I've no doubt we'd have won that game you know we, we played the much better facets of hurling than we played it like you know we we made basic errors in the killed us but we were they were that was a game we could have won you know I honestly don't know much about Carlos this year I didn't get get to see him in any of the games so far and we played him in the league but the league league and championship is two different games so they'll be coming with the with, with, with firing their bellies and hoping to be able to beat us next weekend Just one previous championship meeting between the sides, and that went all the way back to the 1915 All Ireland final, which the Leafs won. But Cork, having lost to Tipperary in Munster, were expected to sweep away a Leafs side that had experienced internal dissent and who'd lost to Antrim in their opening game in the Leinster Championship. Leash actually started well and opened the scoring through Neil Foyle in the first minute. A minute later, it was Foyle again with a splendid point from the sideline to make it two points to no score in favour of Leash. Indeed, it was a competitive opening spell from both sides, with Leash adding two more points and Cork three, before John Brophy got another point for Leash, and with ten minutes gone, Leash led by five points to three. But then the Cork bandwagon started to roll. On 12 minutes, they got their first goal, as Patrick Horgan powered his way past the Leash rear guard before planting a shot past Patrick Molani in the Leash net. Two minutes later, Cork got another one. Bill Cooper's long ball was caught and then dispatched by Paddy O'Sullivan, which put Dennis Walsh's side into a six-point lead. But then Leash responded with a well-taken goal of their own. Willie Highland caught the dropping ball before brilliantly cracking the ball to the net past Donal O'Cusack. Leash's joy was short-lived, however, as Cork got another goal before the break as Horgan set up Luke Farrell, who had the easiest of tasks, and Cork led 3-8 to 1-8 at the break. 
Leash were then swept away in a second half goal tied as Cork ran rampant against a Leash side that had at least been competitive in the first half. With the win behind, O'Sullivan got their fourth goal of the afternoon. And that was quickly followed by their fifth goal as Horgan got clear of the Leash defence before beating Mulani close in. Goal number six came 20 minutes into the second half and an embarrassing one for the least defence it was as Bill Cooper was allowed to go far too far and he could pick his spot with an excellent finish. Goal number seven wasn't long in arriving as full forward Paddy O'Sullivan got his third goal of the contest after he was set up by 19-year-old substitute Jamie Collin. Leash's defence was run ragged for Cork's eighth goal, Neat passing along the defensive back line and Horgan got another goal, his tally for the day, three goals and 11 points. Colin, who's just out of the minors, had an excellent cameo performance, and it was he who got amongst the goals with Cork's ninth. Goal number 10 came just before the end and it was Colin again who finished to the net with the leash goalkeeper Milani powerless to stop the goal tally reaching double figures. Not since the 1960s has a team scored 10 goals in a championship hurling tie. It finished in Port Leash incredibly, Cork 10-20, Leash 1-13. You know, in a way I was looking forward to it being put up to the guys and um, very disappointed for, for, for Leash because... You know that that scoreline is um, you know it's terrible when you look at it and it doesn't reflect on their you know their outstanding efforts in the first half. Truthfully, I found a terrible lot of disillusionment in it from day one, really, and uh, players not wanting to play for their county and um, kind of and, and all credit to the players that came in there. And I certainly don't want to tarnish everybody with the one brush. There's some great individuals there hurling for leash, and uh, I mean I. You could, I could name off seven or eight people there that would give their life for Leash and kind of had been saying to me a few times, why won't they train, why won't they come in, what's wrong with them? And, uh, and I think from the management point of view and all the lads around me and the county board there, everybody has worked very, very hard and uh, we have spoken a lot and had a, quite a few rows along the way and trying to get inside the players' heads to see what they're thinking and, and what their problems are. And I mean, very, very hard even to get any of them to open up to us there. And I mean, I can only say with the management, with the backup from the county board there, uh, it's been excellent. Uh, they've been a, a great help to, to the management team and anything that the players wanted or anything that we asked for at any stage during the year, all the way from January to now, uh, it has been given with a heart and a half, you know, but I mean, the players hasn't, haven't responded. It's pretty hard st hitting stuff there, Tomás. It doesn't reflect well, really, on the scene in Leash. No, it doesn't reflect, and nobody likes to see a team get a hammering like that, you know. And um, people maybe say maybe Cork could have taken it easy and stuff like that. Look, there's our uh, Dennis Walsh. He was a full compliment to substitution there yesterday. So, I mean, his job is go to go out and win the match. Listening to Brendan Fenley there, it seems there there are bigger bigger mm. issues within Leash, you know. And if those issues are not addressed, you can't expect a team then go out on the, on, on, on the field of play and perform to the highest level, you know, because um, they were coming up against a team yeah. like Cork that were very, very hurt. Yeah, Des, uh, on that point, well, when, when Cork analysed their game against Tip, Des, they realised that if they, they took their goal chances, that they probably could have beaten Tip. In actual fact, their training has upped, they're up a gear, whereas Leash put a turbo lot into the first game and kind of zipped, like, yeah. it's just the other yeah, way yeah. Yeah. Like, Cork believed they will go along with the championship because of the next game at home and they're on a roll. OK, well, you mentioned that. The, the CV